Hello everyone, welcome to Roman Just Codes. I'm Roman, and in this episode I'll continue leveraging the theming we implemented in the previous video to load Rive animation assets according to the selected theme for my Flicky Home Automation app while developing both Splash and Loading Page. Make sure to catch the previous videos in the series where I discuss hardware and project setup. Let's start. Rive is a real-time interactive design and animation tool that allows you to create high-quality, complex, interactive animations for your apps. Rive gives you an editor, which is where you create and animate designs. It's got insane speed, exceptional quality, and best of all, tiny size, which allows you to add complex animations without compromising my app bundle size. Rive is easy to pick up and gives my apps an edge over others. Artboards are the foundation of your composition across both the design and animate mode. They act as the root of every hierarchy and allow you to define the dimensions and background color of a scene. You can create an infinite amount of artboards on the stage, but each Rive file has at least one artboard. Animations are the individual actions that assets can perform by changing their properties along a timeline in the form of keyframes. Inputs are values that are controlled by your app. Inputs are what we manipulate in code to trigger animations and state machines. Your application code can change the values of the inputs at any time and the state machine reacts to those changes. State machines are a visual way to connect and group animations together and define the logic that drives those transitions. For my Flicky app, I created an animated splash screen that I can use for both mobile and tablet animated icons. Also for the loading screen and for my bottom navigation bar, I wanted animated icons as well. All thanks to Rife. Notice how I have state machines named after both my light and dark themes for each of the assets. In the case of my splash screen, we have both light and dark state machines for the bold animation. Make sure to name them accordingly as we'll be referring to them in code so we can trigger them. I will trigger the state machine to go to the next animation by flipping this boolean input value called loaded to true. For my bottom bar animated icons, I instead created a single state machine, but an animation for each theme, which I'll activate by flipping one of the two boolean inputs, light or dark. Whichever one is on, I'll execute its corresponding animation. So I'll refer to these by the corresponding artboard and state machine. But what all of them have in common is that I've named the inputs the same, which I will pull out of the media query platform brightness of feeding the context to get the current applied theme. These icons follow the same convention, and I will use these animated icons for my predefined type of devices that I can set up within the app. They follow the same convention, a light and a dark version, which can be activated via the available Boolean inputs. First, export the animations by downloading a .rive file to be loaded by our Flutter runtime. You get a file called flaky.riv, which contains all the animations baked in. Back in our project, go ahead and drag it inside the assets slash anims folder. Don't forget to enable the assets section in the public spec.yaml and make sure to have an entry for the assets slash anims folder. That's where I'll be dropping my Rife animation files. Proceed to install the Rife package for Flutter by running the command flutter pub add Rive. Let's go back to our splash page and refactor it to support loading Rive animations in it. First things first, convert it from a stateless to a stateful widget since we need to leverage the init state and dispose methods to initialize Rive animation controllers and because we'll be triggering widget rebuilds within itself. Import Rive on this page using an alias. Create an instance of the state machine controller which we'll use to control the animation. A Rive animation instance which contains the animation itself, a boolean state to hold the loaded input in a timer instance to simulate a lengthy operation. In the init state, initialize the animation instance with a Rive animation from the .rive file we brought in as an asset. Make sure the artboard matches to the one you want to target, in our case, the bold anim artboard. Define the onRive init method, which is a callback the Rive runtime calls once the animation is loaded and ready to be interacted with. Remember, we will query the current theme value to load the corresponding state machine. In the arrive init method, which gives you as a parameter the loaded artboard in question, use it to initialize the state machine controller from artboard and specifying the name of the state machine to activate. See what I'm doing here. Since the state machine name is a string, I use it to compose it using the bolt anim prefix plus the available theme and programmatically it will pull the corresponding one. Add the state machine controller instance to the artboard. 
find the boolean input called loaded that we defined earlier in our state machine and store it in our state property of the same type. Using the splash timer, we'll wait two seconds, then change the boolean input by just flipping its value from false to true. Let's replace this future by another timer that we will call duration timer, which will dictate how long the splash animation will last before navigating to the next page. Don't forget to do your due diligence and dispose of the controllers and timers. Replace the contents of this scaffold's body by adding the animation instance in it. Take it for a spin now. And there it is. Flutter loaded the corresponding Rive artboard and through its corresponding state machine, found the Boolean input and triggered the animation. Flip the theme at the system level and reload the app. Nice, we have both themes animations loading accordingly. Love how we can mix both logic and beauty. Let's do the same thing for our loading page, where we'll be loading the app's logo in the middle. Convert it to a stateful widget first. This one will be a bit different because the animation will be playing in a loop and we should trigger the corresponding animation based on the app's theme. And that's why I'm conveniently naming the inputs light and dark, which I can grab from the app's global theme. Smart, isn't it? Notice how we create a map of theme brightness to Boolean inputs. So based on the provided theme, we act on the corresponding input. Initialize it accordingly, using the corresponding artboard as defined in the Rife editor. Populate our map based on the available themes, luckily just two, and by default, explicitly set the inputs to false to avoid any ambiguity. The set state all it will do is, Upon the Rife runtime loading the animation, we immediately trigger the corresponding animation in the state machine using the current theme as the key and flipping its value to true. Add the animation inside a size box with some predefined values for the loading icon. Looking pretty good so far. We need to handle the case. When we detect a theme change, we must rebuild this widget so it picks up the updated theme and load the corresponding animation. Instead, we'll use this isInitializeBoolean flag to ensure that our Rive animation is loaded, then we can act on the input triggers. We'll check if the Rive animation is initialized and we'll listen to changes in the platform's brightness, otherwise the light theme will be provided by default. But what if we instead use the theme.ofContext.brightness in this case? See, the Rive animation did not rebuild upon our theme changing at the system level. Let's fix this. Query the theme out of the media query dot platform brightness of, pass in the widget's context. And if the Rive animation is initialized, only set the input boolean to true if it matches our current theme, whether this is the initial run or the user just changed it from the settings. Okay, so the dark theme loads the bright green version of the logo. Change the settings to light. Light looks good, the dark green. Flip them back again, and it loads the proper Rive animation as we expected. Now we have implemented slick animations in Flutter using Rive's Flutter runtime, and we learned a little bit about Rive, how to create animated assets that we can programmatically control from our Flutter apps. In the next video, we'll continue developing our splash and loading pages, as well as start using Riverpod to implement state management for better decoupling of data and UI logic while we simulate data preloading. See you on the next video. Hey there, I am Roman from Roman Just Codes. I hope that you found the content of this video very useful. And if you did, make sure to like it and subscribe to this channel. You know subscribing to this channel is free, right? Thank you so much for watching.